Welcome back. It's 6 p.m. on day three. We're rapidly nearing the uh, final hours. And while Gabriel is being chased by the two kidnappers, we are going back to Grace. And I actually want you to pay attention to um, this particular display here. Because it appears that these two men are our, our kidnappers, are vampires, and they appear to be making... Of the, appear to be doing something um, to this guy's neck with some kind of weird tool. And that could explain the markings that uh, Prince James showed us. So they're not tooth marks. Interesting. Where could he be? Well, we know where he is. He's um, out getting chased. Let's hope they don't catch him. Okay, um, first things first, I want to check if... Um, we can match the um, print from the Serpent Rouge now. I mean, I doubt it's Estelle, but... Who knows? New email. Oh, I only got a new email. Regarding her medical symbols. Oh yeah, that's the other thing that Sydney was looking all into for us. The symbols from Montreux's robe. Result of symbol. To mix blood distills gold. Mixing blood to create the elixir of life. The Philosopher's Stone. Montreux and his pals are into some weird blood cult thing. I think they're the vampires. Um, yeah, Grace, we kind of already uh, figured it out. So, um, result of symbol search. Grace kind of interrupted me. Match found in 12th century alchem um, alch alchemical, I guess, text. To mix blood to distill alchemical golds, a.k.a. Philosopher's Stone, a.k.a. Elixir of Life, a.k.a. The Holy Grail. That's what Grace is reading. It's a translation, which you could apparently read, uh, read without scrolling down. Reply to this? I don't need to reply to Sydney. I don't need to print it. Okay. Um, let's match our print. Working. Let's sit through this animation again. I wonder if maybe it is Estelle. Although, not very likely, like I said. Estelle! She was the one who left Le Serpent Rouge? Okay. I was not expecting that. Of course, I was expecting it now, because I have played the game before, but first time around, this really was a surprise. Estelle was about the last person I expected to be involved in this. I would have expected it to still be an unknown print. After all, we're still missing Emilio's fingerprint. Okay, well that's interesting, that's for sure. Let's see if we can find uh, Estelle and confront her about that. Um, Estelle and Lady Howard said they were going to work at the site for most of the day, but since it is 6 p.m., they might be back yet. Back already. There is Estelle. Wait, actually. Boy, Estelle looks exhausted. Not surprisingly. Um... You can talk about the Egyptian artifacts and Le Serpent Rouge, and I think you... Someone is walking around. I think I know who that is. I kind of wanted to see him upstairs, but... Uh, okay, this doesn't really matter. Um, 
You can talk about Egyptian artifacts or Le Serpent Rouge, and you need to talk about Le Serpent Rouge first if you want to get all the points. That's kind of uh, evil here. Estelle, I've been meaning to ask, you didn't lose this, did you? <gasps> Le Serpent Rouge? What? But that's not the one that... Where did you get it? Don't you know? Why should I? May I... May I see it again? No. You left this riddle for me just like you left the book and all those notes, didn't you? What on earth are you talking about? Hmm. Look, will you show me your copy? We have a copy too, you see. But we haven't made much headway. Yours looks quite different. Please, Grace. Please. I'll think about it. Now we talk about Egyptian artifacts. I heard Lady Howard mention some Egyptian artifacts that were found here. I don't know what you mean. Hmm. All right. I'll show you my copy of Les Serpent Rouge if you tell me. But it better be good. Come up to my room. Good. Lily's having a bath. Oh, she's been so distraught lately. She hasn't been in the mood to talk about the mystery. Dr. Wen found these objects when he was digging here 20 years ago. He became convinced that the Wren mystery was deeply tied with Egyptology. He believes there's a seed of alien wisdom buried here, a seed similar to that planted in Egypt. Huh. So where did Dr. Wen find these artifacts anyway? On the back of Mount Kardu, in a cave. He said it headed off into further caverns, but he never got the chance to explore them before his, um, his accident. His accident? Yes. Didn't you know? Oh, my. That cave is on private land now. Not that it matters. It was just one of the many storage caves of the Atlanteans. The seed itself is the real treasure. It was placed based on cosmic alien logic. Unfortunately, Dr. Wen's latest calculations still seem to be a bit off. I'm not surprised. That cosmic alien logic's a bitch. Can I just look at the pictures, please? Oh, of course. I'm sorry. What's this? Dr. Wen never identified it. Odd, isn't it? Can I borrow this photograph? I promise I'll get it back to you. In exchange for Le Serpent Rouge? Deal. I better go. Good luck, Estelle. Thank you, Grace. Of course, I wish you the same. Okay. Well, it seems to me that uh, Dr. Wen found the northeast arm of the... Uh, pentagram at the back of Mount Cardu, the one we couldn't get to because it is now on private land. However, it seems that his theory goes a bit wonky from there. Because, um... Well, Atlanteans, the seed, I don't know what all that stuff has anything to do with uh, this. It seems to uh, be nonsense. And I don't think Estelle is going to get very far uh, with our copy of Le Serpent Rouge, which strangely we still have, even though we just gave it to her. Um, after all, she doesn't have Sydney. And it seems that the print on uh, the envelope was a fluke. I guess maybe it was her env envelope, but somebody else put it there. She was not the one who left the notes or the um, the envelope for us. That really leaves only one person, doesn't it? And let's look at this photo we got. It's the tool from the image at the start of this time block, which we saw was used by our night visitors to draw blood from the steward heirs. It's the artifact photo I got from Estelle. I have my doubts about Dr. Wen's seed, but this looks Egyptian, all right. It also looks like something a vampire might use. Exactly. It's kind of a nice, subtle thing, if you didn't pay attention to the uh, 
opening photo, you probably would not realize what this is. Okay, now, um, when I was going downstairs, you could actually hear a door opening, but I didn't see it. Um, I was kind of hoping to be quick enough so that would happen after I leave this room. Because if you pay attention then, you can actually see Emilio Baza going downstairs. And then we heard him going outside while we were talking to um, Estelle, something you can also witness if you follow him down. But I do believe he will still be hanging out outside. See? There he goes. And if you go outside by yourself before seeing Emilio come out of his room, you'll just see him come out behind you. And of course, the idea is to see where he's going. He is one of our remaining suspects, after all. Well, I guess we know that Montreux uh, is our kidnapper. But we don't know if maybe Emilio is connected somehow. He seems to be going towards the church. Or maybe he just really likes cats. Nope, he's definitely going towards the church. Towards the cemetery. I wonder what he's up to. Is he meeting the Abbe? No, it's Mesmi. The hell? Please. The reverence is not for you. I know that. You should not be here. You should not be anywhere near this place. They do not know I'm here. You had better hope not. We have enough to worry about with the baby. Has there... has there been any confirmation that he's the Kanosh Kanaya? No. The signs are ambiguous. We won't know for certain until he's old enough to show his will. But if you do not know, they cannot know either. I'm certain they do not, but they will take his blood anyway, and it may be enough. Of course, we must stop them. How? You have been watching Mr. Knight? Yes, you were right about his family. He has his own destiny to fulfill in all of this, and the girl has found the entrance to the temple. It may be too late. We're almost out of time. Not until midnight. I have tried to prepare them as best I could, but it is almost cruel to send him in. Do you foresee something? I have told you. I will not foretell the outcome, but the forces arrayed below will be terrible. He will not be sent alone. When can we start? Give me time to speak with him. I will call you at the villa. Very well. Till then. Is he talking about Gabriel? About the person they want to send somewhere? I think he was. So Emilio does have something to do with all this, but he seems to be on the side of Prince James. Well, unless Mesmi is betraying James as well. Oh my god, what is going on? That is a good question to ask. And I think that at this point, we are going to have to confront Mr. Baza about this. Get some answers for once. That would be a change. Let's see where he's going. Back towards the hotel, it seems. Yep. Well, let's hope he um, goes somewhere where we can speak to him in private. And he seems to be going back up to his room. Well, that suits me fine. All right. Time to find out what's going on with him.
I think it's time we had a talk, Mr. Baza. You left that copy of Le Serpent Rouge at the museum for me, didn't you? Yes. And the little notes at the center of the circle and the arms of the hexagram. Guilty as charged. I don't get it. If you wanted to help Gabriel and I, why didn't you just be open about it? I must be very careful that... that certain people do not know that I am here. You're part of the secret brotherhood, aren't you? You and Mesmi. You are correct about Mesmi. He is with the Brotherhood, but I am not. I haven't been for some time. And Montro, he's one of the others, the ones who steal the blood? Yes. They call themselves adepts of the Holy Blood, but they are vampires, pure and simple. I don't understand. Why doesn't the Brotherhood just stop the vampires? If you are to understand what we're up against, you must know the whole story. Listen. The secret brotherhood are the weavers of the bloodline. It is a process intricately linked to the stars. The birth of the Divine One, the one the brotherhood calls the Kenosh Kenaya, can only happen during certain planetary alignments with the constellation Osiris. Just over 2,000 years ago was the last such configuration. The Brotherhood was expecting something profound. They tried frantically to read the signs and omens. There were many branches of the bloodline, even back then. One was the House of David, and it was to this branch that the signs pointed. So the Brotherhood used their influence and a bit of magic to convince the current heir, Joseph, to marry his betrothed before the date prescribed by Jewish tradition, Mary conceived. The signs for the birth were auspicious, a conjunction of two planets, Jupiter and Mercury. This created a star, a certain sign of success. But the Jewish king, Herod, heard of the birth of a Davidic heir and threatened the infant's life. The Brotherhood took the family to Egypt, and the young god was reared there, tutored in the ways of the infinite. So Jesus was the Kenosh Kenaya? Oh yes, he was what we had awaited. The open portal between man and the infinite. The one who could see the fabric of the universe and alter it at will. Wow. But he was also a Jew. Jesus insisted on studying the Torah, learning his heritage. As he read the tales, he became convinced that he was the Jewish Messiah. From the Brotherhood's point of view, it was a limited ambition. And yet, who were we to tell the Divine One what he was or was not? What happened? He returned to Jerusalem. A few of the Brotherhood went with him to watch over him. What we didn't realize, perhaps because we were not Jews, was that Jesus intended to fulfill the prophecies. All of them. What about the vampires? Where do they come in? I will try to explain. You see, the Brotherhood collected blood samples for study and testing before they selected brides. There were certain magical rites performed. There had always been rumors that some of these priests had dared imbibe the blood to steal power for themselves. Of course, such things were taboo. And when these rumors surfaced among the initiates, oh, they were harshly scolded. But when Jesus was being reared in Egypt, there was a young initiate who envied his strange abilities. He began to whisper to his friends that to truly serve the Kenosh Kenaya, the priesthood ought also to be immortal, just like the Kenosh Kenaya himself. Jesus was immortal? In a sense, he could reweave the fabric of his body at will, just as he could those of others. He could have healed his own wounds, but he chose to perform the sacrifice the prophecies demanded. It wouldn't have been much of a sacrifice had he rescinded. So what happened with the young initiate? 
His name was Sine, and one of the boys he persuaded was Ali, son of the Brotherhood's headmaster. Ali wasn't a bad boy, but he loved Jesus and liked the idea of living with him forever. Fortunately, he approached his father about it one night. When the headmaster heard of the heresy, he exploded. Sine and his followers were expelled. Only Ali remained, having repented his ignorance. But Sine and his followers didn't give up. Sine grew bitter. He decided they would steal the blood. He kept his eyes on the conclave, but could never get close. When Jesus left for Jerusalem, they managed to keep it secret from Sine. He did not arrive in Israel until... until it was too late. So Sine's group, the Adepts, are still after the blood. Even worse, they found it. Jesus had heirs, two sons. That was the one thing he did agree to do for the Brotherhood's sake. His sons were only human. They'd missed the window of Osiris, but they survived to have descendants. Now the window is open again. Yes. Is the baby, Charlie, the Kenosh Kenaya? We, we do not know. It depends on how well the vine has been woven. It depends on many things. Sadly, it may not matter. Where the Brotherhood has woven for 2,000 years, the Adepts have tasted. The bloodline grew too broad for the Brotherhood to protect each descendant every minute. And as the vampires succeeded in stealing here and there, they grew in power and in corruption. They will resort to anything for the blood, blackmail, murder, even black magic. They've been mixing the blood as you have, but in their own bodies. Exactly. And they've been doing it for so many generations that they've changed, physically. It is a result of the blood, but even more, the result of corruption. You see, the power they have is stolen. It is not theirs. <sighs> even so, they are strong. The Brotherhood does not taste of the forbidden fruit. They're no match for the Adepts anymore. And the baby's blood may be enough to tip them over the threshold, even if he's not all we think he might be. So what will happen if they take his blood? Montro will be king of the world, Rex Mundi incarnate. God. Ah, oh, it's Gabriel. Thank heaven. Thank heaven indeed. We have quite nearly run out of time. May we meet in your room, Ms. Nakamura? Okay, the plot thickens, as they say. Seems that Charlie might be the Kwisatz Haderach. I mean, the Kenosh Kanaya. Well, same difference. And Montreux wants to imbibe his power by imbibing his blood. Apparently that works. And of course, we cannot let that happen. But it will be up to Gabriel to stop him in the last time period of this game, which will start in the next video.